I kind of coined four pillars to success. And the number four, which the most important pillar to success when you're trying to build out teams, especially in a, a highly scaled and innovative way, is one thing that Avis is really good at is like we look at the ability for somebody to do the job. You might not have the background or done it before, but if you've shown the ability and like give you all the resources to take on a new challenge. We're a mobility company that's driven by people and it's driven by the technology behind it. And that's really what's gonna help set us to an advantage whenever it comes to our mission of being the number one mobility provider of the world. When you are looking at a new opportunity, if you're potentially changing roles, go and run a boonie search, go and find some former employees and reach out to them. I absolutely love it. Just get more information. You don't necessarily have to believe it all. Is it easier to make a cold call or is it easier to find somebody that has already showed interest in your product or your organization? Hello and welcome to another episode of the Power of People Building podcast. My name is Mark, I'm the co-founder and CEO at HackerJob, and I am your host for today. And today we have a treat because not only do we have one guest, we have two guests from Avis Budget Group here in the US uh, to tell us all about the really exciting and interesting journey that Avis have been on over the last couple of years with their digital transformation program. So first up, we have Ben Murley joining, who is the Global Corporate Talent Acquisition Manager at Avis Budget Group. And Ben is located in Nashville, my new favorite city in the US after I got to go there for Wreckfest a few weeks ago. Um, and Ben's career has been distinguished by his dynamic leadership style and unwavering dedication to achieving business objectives. He presently leads the change in managing global corporate talent acquisition programs at Avis Budget Group and brings a wealth of experience in technical talent acquisition, talent management and organizational development. Beyond his professional journey, Ben is a passionate Africanado of pickleball, which is my new favorite US sport, fishing, rock climbing, embodying his enthusiasm for both work and life beyond the office walls. Ben, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Mark. I appreciate it. What a brilliant introduction. Uh, and joining Ben today is Nicole Bartman. Nicole is a global recruitment marketing and sourcing manager at Avis Budget Group. Nicole kicked off a professional life in the world of nonprofit management, but eventually transitioned into the corporate arena. Her journey led her to Avis Budget Group, where she leads a global recruitment, marketing and sourcing realm within talent acquisition. Fueling this journey is Nicole's passion for making a significant impact. She's like a matchmaker for attracting top tier talent and life changing career opportunities, ready to set the world on fire with their potential. Beyond her career, Nicole has been sharing adventures with her partner in crime, Andrew, for 15 years. Together, they have two daughters and stand as beacons of compassion as foster parents, always ready to provide a loving home when the need arises. Nicole, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Ben, we're going to start with you. Talk us through your career journey into recruitment. Where did this incredible career start from? Yes, yes. No, I, I um, really, when I think about it, my career actually kind of started at my time back at, uh, I think, at, uh, you know, my time with the, uh, at the University of Tennessee, where I actually studied marketing and supply chain. And basically what I learned from that time was that I did not want to work in marketing or supply chain. And uh, after graduation, I, I, I really kind of just stumbled into a, a really great introduction to an local, uh, a local owner uh, of a tech consulting company here in Nashville, which essentially brought me in, and started the foundation in my career in recruitment. Uh, you know, from there, I, I ended up kind of transitioning into a couple of other roles into some large retailers and um, further just developed my recruiting skills, my talent acquisition backgrounds and building relationships throughout our industry. But that's that's essentially what got me in was a, a little bit of, of, of luck and luck in finding my passion. Amazing. I love it. And it's amazing as I've done more and more of the episodes for the Power of People Building podcast, the kind of serendipity that people end up with and finding their, their home in, in talent acquisition and recruitment, which is awesome. Um, Nicole, talk us through your journey. How did you progress into the world of recruitment marketing, which has grown so much over the last few years? Um, so my background is nonprofit management. Um, I wanted to make an impact. 
I was really good at raising money. And so it, as an executive director, it was like 10% of my job. But I was winning awards um, for the most money raised in fleet. Um, so I was beating out recruiters, or not recruiters, fundraisers at raising money. And so it kind of got me noticed. And I was able to do a pilot role. Um, how can we raise money really efficiently? Um, connecting people with the mission of the organization. Um, that led me into how do you raise people and how do you do it efficiently and uh, effectively. And so I took on a new role at the nonprofit as a national recruitment manager. And it really was taking those core values on connecting people to mission and getting people excited. So I did that for about four years, was really passionate about it, um, was able to hit some really amazing goals. So we always did fill rate. Um, so our when I jumped into the role, it was about an 80% fill rate. When I was transitioning into the recruitment marketing space, we were at a 97% fill rate. Um, but I was really able to take those things as a recruiter, like how do you go beyond just recruitment? How do you market to the people that you have already hired? How do you market and get in front of the people so that when they're looking for a job, they're thinking of our organization? And I was able to do that really well as a recruiter. And during the pandemic, things shifted where the organization realized like, we need, this needs to be a function and we need to have somebody managing and owning and doing this work. And so it really started as like a project manager for, you know, some of our essential workers that we needed. How can we get in front of them and how can we convey that message and, and it's still important that you do this work, it's in front of people and you're putting your, your health at risk. So from there, I really kind of leaned into that space, constantly learning about recruitment marketing and I've always loved marketing, so it worked out really well for me, but it was essential that we had those pipelines during that pandemic. Amazing, an incredible journey. And you both joined Avis at a really exciting time. If you rewind a year or two, the company is kicking off this massive, large scale digital transformation program without ever having had an in-house tech recruitment function. So Ben, tell us about your journey into Avis. What was it that excited about you, the position and how did you end up there? Yeah. So rewinding a, a, a few years back, um, you know, people throw out this word of, of digital transformation, right? And what, what does that actually even truly mean? So for the listeners, any, when you think about, go back to 2020, right? And, and, and I'll, everybody was faced with adversity and just like everybody, our industry was going to be faced with adversity in, in our organization. And lucky, luckily for us, we have a you know, a CEO and a senior leadership team that really foresaw a lot of the challenges that were going to be coming in 2020, really even before they came. So we were able to, as an organization, be very adaptive to where we were actually able to remain profitable in a time when it, it looked unlikely to do so, right? So come 2021, uh, we end up having a record-breaking year. Everybody thought it was going to be a big uh, fluke of a year. Uh, come 2022, we end up beating our 21 numbers within just the first two quarters of the year, right? So with this uh, uh, financial security and, and, and uh, competitive advantage we now have, we got a lot of investor backing to support a huge digital transformation that could help us drive to be the number one mobility provider in the world through investing in our technology, right? So, so any digital transformation is going to consist of scrapping your old legacy systems. It's uh, modernizing your, your tech stack. It's rewriting and retooling your, your applications all the way from the ground up. Um, it's, it's very aggressively migrating to the cloud, right? One thing outside of this large digital transformation that the organization was doing at the time was also really restructuring the way our operating principles were designed. So our organization used to be a very uh, project-centric operating model within our, our tech org. And what they did is they really moved over to being a very product-centric uh, agile operating model within our organization, within the tech organization. So what this did is it really globalized the way that the work was being done. So to answer your question, 
joining Avis was a real pivotal moment in my career. And what drew me to the company is is this ambitious digital transformation as a whole and the opportunity to to shape a global technical talent acquisition function and and giving me the opportunity to provide you know not only strategic direction to where how we needed to support this tech organization from a global talent acquisition function but also building high performing teams and and you know trying to develop innovative recruitment strategies and in and, and being at the forefront of what this organizational change truly looks like which was incredibly motivating for me yeah i love the story and i love the big ambitious goal of you know being the number one mobility provider in the world you know it's something that you can really have as a very strong evp something that's going to be really inspiring for people to come and join the organization and I love it when you see a brand like Avis, which is such a household name and everybody know, knows it so well, but it's still so ambitious and still, you know, wants to push forward and, and wants to change and evolve. Nicole, tell us your journey. You know, how did you land into to Avis? I think there might be some reach outs to some former Avis Budget Group employees that you were doing as part of your journey. So we'd love to hear your route into the organization. Yeah. So it's interesting. I wasn't looking. I was very happy in the company I had been with for eight years. I loved the mission of the organization. So I was honestly like no desire to look for another job. And at this time, you know, two years ago, I think, you know, top talent was getting inbox emails all the time in LinkedIn saying, hey, this is the opportunity. And I am a firm believer that you respond to every single message, even if you it's a no. And that's what I did. I said, no, thank you. Um, I'm currently really happy. If you want to have a conversation, maybe I can connect you to somebody in my network. But no, thank you. And she sent a nice message back saying, thanks. I, I have some other messages out. Uh, give it a month later, she sent a follow-up message to me and said, hey, I want to connect. Would you be willing to have a conversation with me? And I said, absolutely. And so I came to the conversation thinking I was going to be a connector for her. This is somebody that I could grow my network with and I can help, even though I'd never met her in my life. And when she started talking about the opportunity at Avis, you know, we had brought talent acquisition in-house six years ago. This was going to be a new function. Um, this person was going to develop the strategy, the team, and really be part of building. And so it got me thinking, like, well, why not me, <laughs> you know? Um, so from there, I was gonna do a lot of research because I think everybody who's looking for a job, it's great to work, like reach out to somebody who is in the company, but let's be honest, they're gonna tell you the great things. And I wanted to hear the good, bad, and ugly. And so I did a quick Boolean search of former employees and I cold reached out to them. Like I, I didn't know them. And I said, hey, I wanna talk to you. I just had a conversation with um, the director of TA at this organization and would you be willing to jump on a phone and tell me about the organization? And they did, they told me the good, bad and ugly, right? And I needed to hear that because I didn't wanna go in with my eyes closed. Um, recruiters are great at telling you all the good. And so I really wanted to hear like, what were gonna be my challenges? What were gonna be the things that were gonna frustrate me and what would I need to get over? And so I was able to make an educated decision. I think everybody should do that. Um, do your research about the company, ask former employees. You might wanna take it with a grain of salt, but um, they're also gonna tell you what you need to hear and you need to be okay with that when you go into that organization. So for me, it was, I was excited about where Avis budget was going. I was excited about what the leadership um, had envisioned. I was also really excited to go somewhere and, you know, build it from the ground up and be part of something that's so exciting. Yeah. And one thing we always try and do in this podcast is give really actionable insights and takeaways that our listeners can go and have. And here's the first one. When you are, looking at a new opportunity, if you're potentially changing roles, go and run a boonie search, go and find some former employees and reach out to them. I absolutely love it. I think it's such a great, powerful way to, like you say, just get more information. You don't necessarily have to believe it all. You don't have to necessarily take a decision off it, but at least you're going into to the organization with your, with your eyes wide open. And it's really interesting that you were both headhunted into this organization. You know, how, how powerful do you see headhunting in, in kind of this quest of finding the best talent and leveraging referral programs? How important is that to the strategy at Avis? 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, most of the best people and the best talent are are aren't looking for roles, right? I mean, they, you kind of go, have to go out and, and fish and find them. And uh, if you're if you're you're an organization that's growing, Nicole's a great example, right? That was somebody that Avis had to go out, fish, find, entice, and uh, uh, Avis got a stud out of it, an absolute stud. She's a winner. Well, thanks, Ben. I will also say from a candidate experience, when you are sought after, it makes for a much better candidate experience because, um, you know, it's like dating. Like you want, you want, you want to be reeled in. You want to be oozed and dined and all those things. Um, so I think it's a great way to go into an organization if you are. Yeah, I entirely agree. And candy experience is one of the most recurring themes uh, when I get to sit down with leaders like yourselves and and have these conversations. But there is something quite magic about, you know, the chase, you know, and uh, an organization chasing you and, and really trying to woo you into, into the company. Um, so, Nicole, let's jump into kind of your journey at ABG so far. You know, it's not only this very large scale transformation program, but obviously very, very fast moving. How have you found it moving from kind of the nonprofit world into that corporate arena, you know, with an organization that's moving at such a fast pace? It's thrilling, but it's also challenging. I was fortunate that I worked for a disaster organization, so oftentimes um, you have to be fast moving. So for me, it was kind of part of my core DNA, but I will say it's a testament to our company's culture and the strategy to stay ahead and to embrace change. I mean, to the core, that's what Avis Budget's all about. Um, but it's exciting. Like, it's exciting to be part of a team that's going to move fast, that's going to be able to effectively change the the dynamic of the rental um, industry. Um, but that also has been such a blessing for me, like my career growth. So think about it. I came in as a recruitment marketing manager, and I was going to manage a, a team of three people. And then it was like, okay, we're going to set up this sourcing function. It makes sense, Nicole. You're going to do everything front of funnel. And, you know, I've been with the organization for two years. And I think one thing that Avis is really good at is, like, we look at the ability for somebody to do the job. You might not have the background or have done it before, but if you've shown the ability, they will invest in you and, like, give you all the resources to take on a new challenge. So, I took on the sourcing team, and now I'm just now launching, you know, the global structure for uh, recruitment, marketing, and sourcing. And in such a short time, I've been able to do a lot because we are so fast-paced and changing. I love that an organization like Avis is embracing change and is so fast-paced. And that hiring philosophy of giving people a chance and letting them demonstrate their ability resonates with me a lot. We've tried to build a business and a product around that. And believe there is so much hidden talent, you know, when you look beyond just a CV and beyond just the keywords that, that an individual might have, have, have put up. So it's amazing to hear that. Ben, talk us through the, the kind of practicalities of this tech transformation, right? The organization has evolved, you know, not just from its mission and its goals and what it's trying to achieve, but it's also changed its operating principles from kind of more project centric work to more product centric work. I'd love to hear some insights on how you've seen that change and that evolution inside the company. Yeah, I, so this integration of this product-centric model really globalized the work that was being done within the tech organization, right? So being able to support this, my team and the, the talent acquisition function also has to support from a globalized product-centric operating model throughout the organization. And what's done is, is this shift of, of being able to work hand in hand with this new operating principle has helped us align our recruitment strategies far more closely with what the company's goals and, and, and uh, the ability to help scale with the tech organization efficiently. Yeah, amazing. And it's amazing to see that kind of product philosophy kind of bleed out into the wider organization and, and kind of have that impact, you know, across the across the org, not just inside um, the tech function. One of the recurring themes that we like to get people's perspectives on is as leaders, you know, your process, your approach to building high performing cross functional teams. Nicole, since you've joined the business, you know, both you and Ben have had the opportunity to, to kind of grow your teams. How do you think about that when you, you've got the opportunity to go to the market and hire? How are you trying to, you know, that, that team composition, the skills, the types of personalities that you want to join? Whilst you're also still fairly new to the organization and getting a grip of it yourself as well. 
Yeah, I think down to Avis's core, we are all about internal movement. So when I opened up positions on my team, it was like asking around who internally would be great for this role, who could this be an opportunity for. And then we have a great referral program. So we um, give $1,000 to our internal um, employer employees to refer candidates. And so that's that's big money. <laughs> um, and so that was the, the approach I took at first is like, who internally can we promote? I was able to get an intern who started with the organization, had a great reference from one of the HR business partners. So she joined my team. And then I was able to have somebody else who was a referral from a recruiter. And she's been with our team now for a year and a half. And, and then I did open it outside because I didn't have any other internal or referrals. I opened it out to the outside, organi you know, uh, marketplace and was able to hire from there. When it came to the sourcing team, it was a little bit different. Um, I wasn't in charge of the actual hiring. I didn't interview any of the people. I was told this is the team, which is even more exciting um, because then you get to like learn more about them and develop them and grow them um, as a team. So it's been really exciting. I will say we really wanted to brand ourselves as a team of like comes from yes, like Yes, we'll take it on. They're a project no one else wants. We'll do it. Like we are the we've we've grown to be the team that you go to when you need assistance, even if it's on something that's not recruitment, marketing, or in sourcing. Internal mobility is such a powerful retention tool as well. When you can give people the opportunity to move around the organization internally, you know, evolve their careers, maybe take slightly different pathways. It's it's so powerful and. And amazing to hear the the thousand dollar referral scheme. I can imagine you get a lot of referrals given uh, the size of uh, the size of bonus on offer there. Um, but Ben, talk us about the the challenges you had in in kind of building out the tech team, right? The the tech arm of the business or, or this kind of digital transformation program and the recruitment team that's powering it is still relatively young. You're competing for talent against some of the biggest and most well known tech companies out there. So, what have been some of the challenges you faced in the role? Yeah, Mark, I tell you, um, so our world head headquarters is based out of Parsippany, New Jersey, which is a great town, and we're moving into a, a brand new office building that's going to have a whole lot of great features. It's going to have a, a, a really, really great working environment for our employees and for our team. Um, it's no Silicon Valley, right, whenever it comes to just, just pure amount of, of, of available tech talent. Um so yeah, it's 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 uh, it's tough. We have to compete directly with some of the big tech giants of, uh, you know that that the talent is is uh, seeking right. Um, this takes an effort on our end to really showcase the work that we're doing and, and, and show people that we are a tech company. You know, people think of Avis and they immediately think of a rental car company. That's our bread and butter, but we are a mobility company but we're a mobility company that's driven by people and it's driven by the technology behind it. And that's really what's gonna help set us to an advantage whenever it comes to our mission of being the number one mobility provider of the world. Not only is the work that you're going to be doing really going to be enhancing our organization, but it's really gonna be making an impact in a significant way on the way that the industry does business as a whole. So it's getting that message out there, but uh, uh, you know, yeah, it, it does provide us challenges. And Nicole, obviously a big part of your role is getting that message out there and is telling that story. And why I'm you know, so grateful that you've both come on the podcast together today, it's, it's a great opportunity to explore you know, how two different parts of the recruitment and talent acquisition world can partner and come together. So I would love to hear how you and your team are thinking about more creative ways to tell that story that, that Ben just shared and also how you and Ben are partnering on that journey together as well. I will say our partnership's new, right? We really needed to focus on a certain vertical, and so we haven't been able to, to play in the, the IT space or the corporate space as much, and so it is a newer partnership, but it's also exciting. So it also comes, I think, from Ben's personal brand. Like, he's so collaborative, and so it's easy to want to reach out and be like, hey, can we try this? Can we try this? I'm um, a firm believer. I will have a thousand different, you know, thoughts, plans, things that we can do, one or two might be good, but um, I'm constantly thinking and researching. I'm constantly re learning. I'm like, hey, you know, our social game might not be where it is, but what is somebody we can partner with to tell our story? Or what are some of those um, different things that no one else is doing to get in front of this top talent? 
um, the talent that wants to come and, and be part of something really exciting. And talk us about taking on the candidate sourcing team as well, because that wasn't initially part of your mandate. That wasn't initially part of your remit. But like you said, as you joined the organization, uh, you ended up looking after candidate sourcing. What's that journey been like since since that's happened? I think when it first happened, I'm like, you want me to do what? <laughs> like, does this make sense? Um, I think it's very strategic. When you look at it and you're thinking front of funnel, my team on the marketing side is looking at all the data. So every week we're looking at the candidate pipelines, where, where does it need help, what we can do from a marketing aspect. So now it's like we have this other resource on our team that we know the data on where things are, where the pipelines are, maybe where they need work, and then we can leverage that sourcing arm to, to make sure before anybody notices or anybody's complaining about the pipelines, we're already activated that tool. So it's been such a blessing. I didn't think it aligned at first. I was really like, mm, does this make sense? Um, but it really does because we're doing everything front of funnel. We're catching things super early and then we're able to deploy a sourcer. And even to the point when we're looking at the data on like, okay, where are the sources? Where, where are we getting the candidates? What's the, the target audience? We're able to share that information because the team is um, already together and aligned. So it's, it's made a lot of sense strategically. And so we're able to get pipelines up and going way quicker because we have all the data behind it. Then we also have the knowledge of the sourcers who are actually talking to candidates that um, we're reaching out to. And Ben, tell us your perspective on the partnership. You know, how has it worked so far from your perspective and, and what's been the real highlights of it? Yeah, I tell you, if anyone can do it, it's Nicole, right? And and that's kind of my general general thoughts on, on anything and everything whenever it comes to partnership with, with the recruitment marketing team. Uh, collaborating with Nicole and Nicole's team, uh, their value is truly invaluable, right? Um, it's allowed us as a new partnership to be able to create a seamless recruitment process from all the way from attracting the talent and bringing them on board, right? This, this new alignment has kind of enhanced the, the candidate experience and, and streamlined our recruitment efforts which in my mind has really ultimately led to better hires and better quality hires. And we talk about quality of hires there. One thing that I love speaking to talent leaders about is thinking, how do we build these really successful, high performing teams? And I know Ben, this is something that you spent a bit of time thinking about and you know, I've almost created your own sort of mental model and framework on, on the various pillars that, that do this. So I'd love, to, love for you to share that with the audience. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, really, whenever it comes to, you know, I've, I've, I've coined these, these four pillars to success, right, within, within the, the team. And this really all started, so whenever I, I, I came a part of the organization, we knew that we were going, and just due to the timing of things, we knew that, it, that uh, we were going to be challenged with hiring because organizations were forced to expand the digitization of the way in which they were doing business. And to support that, we had to grow our internal teams as well, right? Um, this was, was not going to be an easy task um, because the customer journey needs to be uh, uh, more digitized and also the supply chain interactions um, needed to be to dimmed down. All at the same time, there was a, a huge tech talent shortage that was increasing, right? So, so to attack this, right, knowing this wasn't going to be a, a, an easy challenge, I kind of coined four pillars to success, you can call them, right? So number one, uh, you have to be able to find local talent, identifying and exploring local talent hubs, right? Um, these are typically gonna be situated near your local organizations, right, universities, uh, uh, learning centers, um, uh, you know, other other organizations that are built and have um, uh, incubator incubators of localized talent. Right, so that's that's number one. You got to build those relationships with with exploring your local talent hubs. Number two is seeking out your internal talent. Right, and I think this can sometimes get overlooked, especially from a recruiter's mind and from a talent acquisition standpoint, but you really need to be preparing your internal candidates for your new and your future job openings and help make it, 
make it easy and accessible for these people to be able to see what's actually open within the organization. All right, so that's, that's the second pillar. Now third is building a talent community. All right, so building talent communities to help stay connected to the talent that shows interest in your organization, right? I mean, there are, are large organizations get applicants all the time, right? But, but what are you doing with applicants that don't actually make it all the way through the funnel or don't actually get that initial interview? Um, for my salespeople out there, uh, you know, Mark, you tell me, is, is, is it easier to make a cold call? Or is it easier to find somebody that has already showed interest in your product or your organization? It's always going to be easier to make that call to somebody that has shown an interest in our product and organization, for sure. I mean, that's what I'm saying, Mark, every time, right? So you have to be able to develop a way to where you can build talent pools to hold all of the people that have shown interest in your organization previously and make it easy to access them and keep them engaged constantly. Right? So that's number three. And then number four, which really in my mind is the most important pillar to success when you're trying to build out teams, especially in a, a highly scaled and innovative way, is moving quickly. You have to move quickly and your sense of urgency has to be at an all-time high. Right? Streamlining your recruitment processes and reducing time to hire is, is of course, uh, you know, the base of all of this. But I tell my people, you got to act like your hair is on fire. Right? I mean, it, it, people that are the best of the best and that are in the, the, the talent community, they're not sitting here. They're not in the job market long. Right? So, so you, you've got to move quickly. Not only is it the right thing to do in making quick, d decisive uh, uh, decisions, but it's also a huge statistical advantage, right? I mean, there is a huge advantage to being the first company to hire a candidate. Don't, don't ask me the number. I, I, I don't have that prepared for you. I don't, I don't have that ready. But there's a huge statistical advantage for it. So, so, so just to kind of recap, first pillar, explore your local talent hubs. Number two, seek out your internal talent. Number three, build out a talent community. And then number four, and most importantly, move like your hair is on fire. And this could be the start of a book, man. This is such a great framework on how to scale technology teams. And I love that you went with the internal talent first before looking at that external talent community. I absolutely agree, Nicole, you touched on it earlier. It is often one of the most underlooked talent pools inside an organization. It's actually, wait, who do we have inside the business today that reflects our cultural values, reflects the type of people that we want, that, you know, giving them that opportunity is going to mean they're more likely to, to stay inside the organization. Um, and something that me and our team will always tell customers is if you can move quickly, you have a massive, massive advantage. Often the, the organization ends up offering the candidate first, often secures the candidate. So I love this. This is a brilliant mental model. We had Nicole's very tactical and actionable process to be doing research and a potential employer. And we now have Ben's four pillars of success when scaling a, uh, a tech team. So thank you both so much for sharing. Before we wrap up and ask the, the question that I ask every guest, Nicole, I just wanted to get your thoughts. You've obviously been on this really exciting journey so far with Avis. What are you most looking forward to next? I, and this might sound silly, but I'm excited to look back a year from now, to look back at everything that we've accomplished. Because I think like when you're in the grind of it, it's really hard to be like, oh, this is wonderful and this is great. But I'm really excited to like look back after our peak season next year and say like, Ooh, look how far we went. <laughs> look, look what we have accomplished. Look where we're at. And so that's what I'm most excited about. Amazing. And what about you, Ben? You know, really, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to just continue to be a part of the growth and, and the impact that our team gets to play along this, this ABG digital transformation, right? And, and I'm looking forward to just further enhancing and learning uh, how we need to adapt our recruitment strategies and and, and, and be a, a big contributing factor to the company's continued success. Amazing, amazing. So before I let you both go, I like to ask this same question of every guest. And Ben, I'm gonna pick on you first. And I know you, I didn't give you much warning before the, the recording started, but what is the single best piece of career advice you have received 
in your career to date? Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's really, really two that kind of stand out in, in particular for me whenever it comes to some of the best advice I was ever given. Um, so one in just kind of a generic sense is build relationships, build strong relationships. Um, you know, it's not, it was the old saying, it's not always the grades you make, it's the hands you shake, right? Um, you know, from a TA aspect, it's, it's build relationships with your candidates, build relationships with your, your hiring managers, your colleagues, uh, uh, with, with, with vendors and partners of all, all sorts and kinds. You never know what that next relationship is going to take you into your career. Um, and then secondly is embrace change and stay adaptable. Embrace change and stay adaptable. In a, a, a constantly rapidly evolving environment, being open to new ideas and, and, and new approaches is crucial to anybody's professional success. Fantastic. I'm certainly going to be using the phrase, it's not always the grades you make, it's sometimes the hands you shake. I love that. What about you, Nicole? Yeah, so mine, I think networking is important. So yes, right on, Ben. Um, the other piece I would say is raise your hand for the jobs that nobody wants or that nobody wants to do. It's going to put you in a position that they're going to see your strengths and it's going to propel your career. I've always said you can't fall out of a basement window. So take those jobs that no one wants, maybe that are the hardest, that are, <laughs> that are just, you know, not something that somebody else will want and do it and do it really well because you can only go up from there. I feel like we should keep recording for the next few hours so I can get more of these one-liners. We've just said you can't fall out of a basement window. I love that. And I think it's so true as well. You know, if you can prove yourself on some of the most difficult, challenging projects, you know, you're only going to build that credibility of inside the organization. So Ben, Nicole, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. Thank you so much for sharing your stories and the journey that Avis is on. And I'm very excited to continue watching the journey and seeing how the team and the organization evolves over the next year. Appreciate it, Mark. Thanks so much for the time. Everybody, we're hiring constantly. Check out our Avis Careers page and, and come check us out, see what we're about, chat with me. Hopefully, Mark, uh, I'm sure you'll find our, our, uh, be able to find an easy way for us to be accessible and our contact information. But it's been, been an absolute pleasure. Appreciate you. Appreciate the part partnership with Hack Job. And uh, look forward to, to continuing the, uh, the relationship. Thank you so much for letting us come on the, the podcast today. And, and we value your partnership with us. Amazing. And we will absolutely include both Nicole and Ben's uh, LinkedIn profiles and all other details in the show notes. And that's a wrap. Thank you for tuning in.